Hi, everyone. Uh, Neil Jason here. Um, here today to introduce you to a brand new line of bases um, called Manhattan Prestige Bases. This one I'm holding right here. Um, I'm a bass player, producer, and uh, now a founder of this new company that's making these fantastic new bases. Um, I've played with a lot of artists that you know. I've played for Paul McCartney, uh, John and Yoko, Hall and Oates, Dire Straits, Cindy Lauper, and uh, many others. I've done thousands of radio and TV commercials, uh, hundreds of television shows, and uh, toured live across the world for many, many years. And in fact, was testing uh, the prototypes of these bases for the last few years, right up until the pandemic, um, on tour with Brian Ferry from Roxy Music and uh, having a great time. Um, I want to show you these today and walk you through some of the great new features about this and um, tell you a little bit about why we actually decided to make these bases. Um, the, the obviously Manhattan Prestige bases, I spent most of my life in session in studio in New York um, City in Manhattan and it has been the inspiration for most of my career. Yes, I've played all over the world, but Manhattan studio work is where this base called the Session One has come from and developed. Um, it's the, to me, a working man's base. It's got the features that we all need and we all love. And a lot of these features are featured on bases that cost four times the price of this. One of the reasons that I wanted to work on developing this bass was to come out with a bass that's completely pro level for everyone for under $1,000. Um, there's no reason that it shouldn't exist on that level like it did for me when I was coming up. Um, so let me walk you through some of the great um, features of this. Obviously, to me, simplicity is part of the sound of a great instrument. Um, it's a simple volume, volume, and tone. That's it as far as the actual controls go. The pickups, and let's just start with, in general, the body, it's just a little bit more streamlined, just a little bit lighter. And when I say lighter, most of the old school basses that I've been playing, and uh, we always love them, were easily 10, 11, sometimes 12 pounds. Um, it occurred to me that there certainly could be a great bass with a great sound that came in at 8 pounds. Some of these come in at 8.1, 8.2, but that's the general idea. Um, so it just feels great on your shoulders. It balances perfectly. Um, simple bridge that transmits the sound into the instrument the way it's supposed to be. Um, pickups and uh, tuners that I got to work with the great Trev Wilkinson um, in uh, designing these uh, new pickups that we have in here. And I was lucky enough to have Trev come to a few of the uh, Brian Ferry performances when we were in the UK and actually see the prototypes in action and work on the prototypes with me. And we had a great time, right, Trev? Um, the, the neck of the bass is really honed in from a series of basses that I've been loving for 50 years. I've been playing for a little over 50 years. Let's not tell everybody that. Um, the, the neck falls very easily to hand. It's thin, it's easy to play. The back of the neck is a very light satin finish. Um, very smooth, very fast. The, the, the frets are the right size for the way you need to be able to set up a bass. They're not super low and they're definitely not high, but it gives you a chance to work your personality in and to play as hard as you need to play. Um, a couple of features that I really like that I've had 
hundreds and hundreds of bases throughout my career. Um, I've had ones that light up like a Christmas tree, and they're very interesting and very fun, but they didn't have the sound I want, they didn't have the feel I want, and again, simplicity. It was just too much extra stuff. So very simply, um, we've put luminous dots, markers, on the side of the neck. Why? Um, does it come up that often? Well, on tour and in certain clubs, it certainly did. Starting on a pitch black stage, uh, getting ready to make an entrance, you know, on a ballad, um, on somebody's song, and you want to be there and get it correct. Well, it certainly was reassuring to just look over and, oh, okay, and now I'm in position and I'm ready. Um, to the point where on some of the prototypes when I first started a couple of years ago, we were going to hobby shops and just cutting out little pieces of luminous tape and putting them on the side um, until we got the correct uh, luminous dots that we love to have in here. Um, another fantastic feature, and uh, I'll show you the back, is the uh, compartment with the plate. The plate is magnetically held on, and it makes it very simple to get to the inside of the base if you're one of those guys who likes to work on it. Easy to swap things out, and just overall not wasting your time when you need to do work and it's extremely secure um, you could see the rounded heel again features that you see on bases that cost four times sometimes more than this price uh, so i'm very proud we were able to get all of these things incorporated in um, at this level um, you could see the neck and the profile the smaller lighter tuning pegs that give it a really perfect balance and our customary red reverse headstock, um, which is uh, a mark of Manhattan Prestige bases and good luck for everybody. Um, I've played a lot of these prototypes on the road. I didn't want this to come out until I had proven to myself that it could take the rigors of being on the road, the planes, the trunk of the car, sitting in a hotel room. Basically, real life, something that you could play for the next 50 years and not have any problems with it. So um, again, thrilled to um, be able to bring this to you. And again, one of the reasons that it became important to me to come up with a base that was at the right price point goes back uh, way back to when I was a young teenager and my dad who was instrumental in making sure that I had a chance at a career. Um, I was playing a lot of instruments, different instruments when I was younger and uh, I lived in the housing projects in Brooklyn outside of Manhattan New York, in New York City and um, in the public housing projects Believe it or not, there was an enormous amount of bands and guys starting to play instruments. And of course, that all exploded when the Beatles came on the Ed Sullivan Show. And the next day, we all had to be in the Beatles. And I made sure I told Sir Paul McCartney that when I first played for him. Um, my dad said, hey, you want to take a walk? Let's, uh, you, you like to go into that music store. I got to walk up that way. And I said, oh, great, great. Because to me, the ultimate place to go was to go to a music store touch every instrument, and just see stuff. Um, to make a very long story short, we walked up, we walked in, and the guy who owned the store said hi to my dad, which immediately kind of thought was a little bit weird, because how would my dad know who this guy was? I mean, I'm the guy who goes into the music store. And they rolled out a brand new amp with the covers, with the dolly, and a brand new bass in a hard shell case. Now for me, this is the twilight zone. I'm a young teenager. I'm still playing my first bass that I bought myself, which was a Kent bass that I bought for $5. And little did I know when I wanted a new set of strings, they actually cost $6. Um, kind of clued me into like, maybe this isn't the best bass in the world. Um, I guess my dad waited a while to see if I was really interested because I was playing the piano and the trumpet and a few other things at that time. And 
he saw I was dedicated to it, and I had these pictures pasted up over my bed. It was like every base and every amp that was invented at that time. So uh, he took me into the store, and they rolled out this stuff for me. And the glory of this situation was being able to, we lived on the south side of the housing projects, and this is a couple of blocks north. You had to walk through the entire housing project wheeling this brand new amp and this bass. I was kind of like the Pied Piper because this was very unusual. Uh, and every building I passed, a couple of more guys would come out, different bands would come out. Hey, what'd you get? Who are you playing with? All that. And very, very big moment for me as a young teenager. And I think somewhere I have very cute and coy pictures of me standing in front of my new amp and stuff like that, that we all did back then to look like we were pros. But that was, to me, the inception of, it. can it be affordable? Can it be something that if you're on a budget, you could still get a pro-level instrument? And that's been ingrained in me since the beginning. And yes, I've had every major instrument that's been made. I've had a lot of custom instruments. The ones I like playing, were just the simple off the shelf ones that I worked on. You work on the action a little bit. You work on what kind of strings you want to put on it. You work on your sound. It develops into you and your playing personality. It's another thing I really like about these new Manhattan prestige basses. It actually, it has a personality. Each one I've played seems to adapt to the way I want it to sound. Um, it, the simplicity again of the instrument based on everything that I've played in the studio and on tour a simple alder body but a good alder body a simple maple neck but shaped correctly and this is a serious compound shape and it's taken us quite a while to get it right and to be able to repeat it consistently um, beautiful rosewood neck I prefer rosewood we have maple and I have maple, but I really like the warmth and the feel of rosewood neck. The slightly smaller tuners and a slightly smaller headstock, it just leads to a balanced, streamlined feeling instrument that if you're going to stand up on stage for three hours, it's pretty fun. So I'm so thrilled to be able to bring this to you, and I hope that you get to play one soon. And I hope to see you all soon. So this is Neil Jason for Manhattan Prestige Bases. Please stay safe and I'll see you on the road.